If you're stressed about how much you need to retire, you've likely been misled. I'm gonna show you the exact method I use to help my clients secure their retirement of their dreams while avoiding the common pitfalls that could jeopardize your future. But there's something you need to know. If you're watching this video, you may have one, two, three million or potentially more saved up. So why are you spending your time watching this if you're such a good saver? Knowing if you have enough with these amounts of wealth should be easy, right? Many people unknowingly fall into this trap and often the best savers and investors are the most susceptible. That's because your whole life you've been an accumulator of wealth. You know how to put money away, save and invest well, but going from an accumulator of wealth to a decumulator of wealth is an entirely different animal. You know, it goes against every instinct you have. You understand the benefits of delayed gratification and financial discipline, and of course, you never want to run out of money, so you're often very conservative in your planning, but sometimes that can be to your own detriment. After all, what's the point of saving your whole life if you're never able to actually enjoy what you've accumulated? The secret is that the principles of accumulation are drastically different than those from decumulation. You know, when you're accumulating wealth, things are relatively straightforward. For example, to hit your goals based on some reasonable assumptions, you need to save 15% of your income annually to reach your target. So it's no surprise that when people enter the decumulation phase of their life, they're often looking for rules of thumb as well. If you do a quick Google search, how much do I need to retire? You're gonna find a plethora of articles pointing you to rules of thumb, such as the 4% rule or multiplying your expense needs by 25. In other words, you take your portfolio, multiply it by percentage, and then you know exactly how much you can take from your portfolio, hopefully matching the income that you'll need throughout retirement. Once you understand that the principles of accumulation are drastically different than those of decumulation, you've overcome the first hurdle in understanding how much you need to retire. But let's dive even deeper into why these rules, such as the 4% rule or 25 times your expense needs, are holding you back from answering that question, how much do I need to retire? Now you might be wondering how the tried and true method of determining if you can retire is flawed. You might be surprised to learn that it is entirely possible to run out of money by following these rules of thumb, such as the 4% rule. This chart here shows you the different scenarios of what can happen to your money if you follow a static withdrawal rate, such as the 4% rule. If someone started retirement with $1 million in a 60-40 portfolio, followed a static 4% withdrawal rate strategy by taking $40,000 per year and adjusted it for inflation over time, you'll see that each little line here represents one of 1,000 different outcomes of this strategy. For example, following this strategy, there is a 10% chance you actually run out of money in year 23. But on the flip side, there's also a 53% chance you end up with more money than you started with at the beginning of the $1 million. And to make this even more concrete, let's look at two different historical examples of how this might have worked. Imagine you decided to retire in 1966 and followed a 4% static withdrawal strategy. Now, unfortunately for you, this was one of the worst times ever to retire historically. And using the same parameters of a million dollar 60-40 portfolio with a 4% withdrawal rate, you would unfortunately end up running out of money. Now on the flip side, if you were one of the lucky ones and retired in 1986 and started using the 4% rule with the same parameters as before, your portfolio would do really well. Your portfolio would actually grow from 1 million to close to $3 million in today's dollars, even despite taking out the same amount of money as the person in 1966. So now I'd argue you can't simply take your portfolio and multiply it by 4% to know with confidence if you have enough to retire. The key you need is a dynamic risk-based guardrails approach to give you the highest chance of never running out of money while also avoiding ending up with more money at the end of your life than you started with. And honestly, this strategy is a game changer because it tells you when you can spend more and when it's time to tighten up the belt. It doesn't just factor in your portfolio, it also considers potential longevity, other cash flows, such as you know the timing of social security benefits or a pension. 
and when expenses might drop off, like a mortgage being paid off. It puts you in a better position to better balance the realities of retirement spending. And the result is that you can more accurately and smoothly monitor your income along the way, helping you balance the risk of, again, never running out of money, but minimizing the regret that you did not spend enough. Now, there's something important for you to know, and this is what trips most people up. A risk-based guardrails approach to creating portfolio income is not just a singular number. I'll show you exactly how this approach can confidently tell you if you can retire or not, because if you don't do it right, you could destroy your retirement. This isn't something that you can put into a spreadsheet, print out, and place it on your desk and hope things don't change. Now, I want you to meet Ken and Susan, who are looking to retire and want to know when that could be a reality. They've been told by a previous advisor that they couldn't retire and that they would need to work another five to seven years. Now they came to us because they wanted someone who could give them the confidence to retire, help them with a long-term tax plan and take this off their plate because it's not how they wanted to spend their time in retirement. They had about 2.3 million saved with 700 in a brokerage account and 1.6 million in pre-tax accounts. Susan had already started social security benefits of 2,500 a month and we recommended Ken delay his benefits to give Susan the higher benefit in case he passed away early. And lastly, they had $150,000 mortgage that was projected to be paid off in 2030. Now, first we need to determine the spending capacity of your portfolio. This means the amount that you can spend, assuming there was really no deviation from the plan, making some assumptions about the targeted level of risk of overspending or underspending. And the spending capacity number incorporates all the unique risks of your retirement plan, including sequence of returns risk, which is the risk that returns are not so good as expected, especially in the early years. Sequence of inflation risk, the risk that inflation is higher than expect, expected, especially in the early years. And then mortality risk, which is the risk that uh, you know available income will be lower maybe because a spouse dies early in the plan. But this isn't a static portfolio number, right? Your risk will change throughout retirement and your income should change to help you avoid overspending or underspending. But how much might your income need to change? You know, because it's one thing to say your portfolio has to decline by, as you'll see here, 26%, and then you might have to cut back spending. But it's another thing to know exactly how much you need to cut back by. So for example, we can confidently say, hey, you know what, if your portfolio were to decline in value by 26%, we're not just saying you might have to cut back, but we're able to confidently say that might translate into a 4% reduction of income or about $700 a month. Now, again, on the flip side, if markets do really good, let's say markets are able to grow by 8%, you're able to potentially take out a little bit more from the portfolio, maybe about $1,000 a month more. And again, that helps you from underspending from the portfolio, make sure that you're not right, just continuing to build up a portfolio that's gonna grow over time. And the beautiful thing is that you're also in the driver's seat in terms of how much risk you wanna take, not just from a portfolio standpoint, but how much risk do you wanna take in your financial plan? Because what we're able to do is say, listen, if you want to create this level of income, right? you might have to make adjustments if the market goes down by 26%. Now, 26% drops in the market do happen pretty frequently. So maybe you don't want to have to make adjustments as often. And what we can do is we can actually make your plan a little bit more conservative, which means you really can't be taking out as much income. And to do that, what we're able to do is say, well, now the portfolio needs to drop by 31% in order for you to be making adjustments. But the nice thing is that the market only needs to go up by 5% for us to be giving you a portfolio income increase. Now, the other thing is we should also account for the fact that you're probably not going to spend the exact same amount throughout your retirement. With a risk-based guardrails approach to creating income, we can account for the reality that most people spend more at the beginning of retirement, you slow down in the middle, and then you typically speed up at the end due to things like medical costs. In addition, some expenses are gonna drop off. So you can see here on their income plan that income is needing to be higher in the initial years because right now we only have Susan's social security to come in. Eventually Ken's is projected to start coming in when he turns 70. So we have these gap years 
where we need to create additional income, but then their income kind of drops off right here from the portfolio need, and why is that? And again, it's because we're considering the fact that they're not gonna have the mortgage payment forever, right? We only have the mortgage payment for the next you know, six years or so, and then that expense drops off, and we don't need as much from the portfolio. Now their plan looked good, but there was still fear of the future. You know, would this plan actually work? Uh, you know, what happens if things are worse than expected? Or what happens if we experience another financial crisis or high inflation era like the 70s? And the beautiful thing with a dynamic risk-based guardrails approach is that we can actually stress test their income plan against some of the worst periods in history. So for example, we can see that if they were to retire right before the great financial crisis, that you know what, we would need to have a, uh, an income drop, but we know exactly what that would have looked like if the past repeated itself. And then we can also see when they might get income increases as well. And again, we can stress test this plan against really bad periods like the stagflation era, which was in the late 60s to early 80s. And again, we can see when they might be able to have some income increases and portfolio decreases, simply showing that, hey, listen, you know, we can't perfectly predict the future, but it is sometimes comforting to know how might my plan have reacted and adjusted through some of history's worst markets. So if we had used the standard rule of thumb, a 4% withdrawal from their 2.3 million portfolio, that'd be $92,000 of income per year. And based on their needs, they would not have been able to retire with this framework. They were delaying Ken's Social Security and still had their mortgage payment. But with a risk-based dynamic approach, we were able to show them they could retire confidently. They knew it could work. And if things didn't go exactly as planned, they understood how to adjust. The plan took into consideration the big picture, not just what size portfolio you need to, uh, you know, to take a percentage of it, but knowing if you can retire is about more than a single number. It's about testing all your financial variables working together to give you the best retirement possible. By using this comprehensive approach, Ken and Susan were able to retire on their terms with the confidence that their financial future was secure, adaptable, and tailored to their unique goals. Now you may have noticed that Ken and Susan had a brokerage account, but also had all their money in pre-tax accounts. There was the potential for them to massively reduce their lifetime tax bill by executing strategic Roth conversions. But what most people don't realize is there is a right way and a wrong way to do Roth conversions. And if done incorrectly, you could end up paying more in taxes than necessary. In my next video, I'll walk you through how to determine the right amount to convert to a Roth IRA so you can keep more money in your pocket and less in Uncle Sam's. Click on the link and I'll see you over there to help you make the most out of your retirement savings.